My name is uh, Elle Storela. I'm the executive director of the Access Campaign with uh, Médecins Sans Frontières. I uh, was with the Access Campaign also uh, 15 years ago when we created DNDI and I was a founding member of DNDI and in the early days uh, together with uh, my then uh, chemist colleague Bernadette Bourdin we were uh, we have rediscovered basically uh, fexinidazole and brought it into uh, preclinical development as a new candidate for sleeping sickness. Scientists who were interestingly quite um, charmed by the fact that years after they worked on that or they published something that people uh, associated with, with MSF uh, reached out and said like, oh, can we, can we learn more about the compounds that you were working on? And so we managed then to get samples of those compounds, whether they, if they still existed, that we then in a collaboration with the Swiss Tropical Institute uh, tested. Uh, for their activity against the parasites, both in a petri dish and, and uh, ultimately if they were good also in, in uh, the, the animal models, and focused a lot on trying to see whether they had this toxicity uh, or not um, that we were expecting. And we were quite lucky uh, to see that actually a number of compounds within that, within the few hundreds, there were not many, but maybe four or five that had actually not, not such a toxicity. And one of them uh, was vaccinidazole that we then uncovered that actually had been in development for, uh, in, in preclinical development as some broad spectrum anti-infective by Hoechst, a uh, German company that later became part of uh, Sanofi Aventis group. We were not looking for something that was patentable. I think today, I mean, no company would ever take a drug, drug candidate, invest money and effort into doing the full uh, research and development if they weren't able to then, you know, commercialize it and make a lot of money out of it. And the way they do that is by having a patent monopoly. We were not bothered by that. So we could look actually at everything that was out there, uh, patented or not patented, it didn't matter. And actually it was better if it's not patented because we then we didn't have to negotiate access. But I mean, we, we looked at, uh, at the whole spectrum. There were uh, a couple of compounds that we uh, started to, to look into. And uh, basically at some point when we, when we managed to um, to get the files uh, from Hoechst uh, that showed that actually a lot of work was, was done already, uh, that, that okay, it was done in the 1970s or 80s according to old regulatory standards, but still they had actually investigated quite uh, far. Uh, the moment we, we got a hold of these files, I really had this eureka moment together with Bernadette and I think I sent an email to Bernard saying like, yes, I think we have something here. Well, I think the, the, the first lesson would be for me that um, to confirm that it is possible for uh, a not-for-profit organization uh, to develop from discovery, uh, early preclinical, up to patient access, do the whole drug development. It is not something that only pharmaceutical companies can do, which often uh, is, 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 is a claim that, that you hear. So. If you put the right teams together, you can actually do it, and you can actually do it for a much lesser cost than what is often claimed that it uh, costs within pharmaceutical companies to develop a drug. 